Hello and welcome to today's PsychoPi tutorial. Today we're going to talk about something that lots of people want to do in their tasks and that is provide trial by trial feedback. So what we're going to do is we are going to build on this POSNA that we've been creating in this tutorial series. So as a reminder, we have at the moment one routine and that contains three components. So these three components are this Q, which is the arrow that points left or right, the target, which is the image presented to the left or the right, and a mouse click response, which translates to touches on a touchscreen device, allowing the participant to click this target. Um, and that is because we have set the target to be the clickable stimulus in this component. OK, so we want to add a feedback routine. So, of course, the first thing we do is we add a new routine and we call it feedback. Well, I'm going to call it feedback. Now, we then add this to occur within the same loop as our trial. So that is we want the feedback to occur just after the trial, because, of course, we can't give feedback on the response time until we have one. Um, and then we want this to change on each trial depending on the current response time. OK, now in our feedback routine, what we want to do is we add a text component. And we're going to call this feedback text. It's important that we don't use the same variable names. So if I just called this feedback, I would get an error telling me I'm all, I've already used that variable name somewhere. That's because I've called my routine feedback. Now, at the moment, we're going to leave all of these parameters apart from the text um, field as default. So we're just going to present this for one second. Now, in our text field, this is where we actually want information to change. Now, we want this to change on every iteration depending on the response time. So to do this, what we can do, first of all, we can set this field to set every repeat. That's, of course, important because we know it, it's going to change on each iteration, as we just said. So we set that to repeat. Next, we're going to start this field with a dollar sign. Now, that indicates that we're going to either insert a variable that we've created or we're going to insert a short piece of Python code. Um, now, we do that for this field because there isn't already a dollar sign at the start of this field. Um, whereas for things like letter height and position, there's already a dollar sign there. So we wouldn't necessarily need this symbol if we were in inserting something to change in those fields. OK, so what are we going to have here? Now, we want something that's going to read something like um, response time was... And then we want to have the response time written somehow. Um, now, how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a formatted string. Now, a formatted string is essentially just um, a string variable that is a piece of text um, or written information. And it's formatted because we're going to insert a variable into that string. So, for example, if our response time is one second, we have our variable that's one second and we have our piece of text, which at the moment is response time was. And we want to insert that one to occur within our string. Now, there's heaps of ways to do formatted strings in Python, um, especially now with Python 3. But we'll leave that to another tutorial. At the moment, the method that we're going to use is we're just going to use the plus sign to concatenate sets of strings. Now, the reason that we're going to do this is because at the moment, this makes the translation into JavaScript slightly easier. Now, how do we know what our response time was? Now, we know that we had a mouse click response that was called RESP. Now, interestingly, in order to access any of the properties within a component, we use the dot symbol. Uh, in Python. So, for example, we could access uh, the name of our response through saying resp.name. 
Um, but we don't want to do that. We want the response time that is recorded. Now, something that is uh, recorded in all mouse uh, click responses, if you've asked it to save on each click, is a variable called time. Now, this time variable is a list, meaning that it can contain multiple elements. So that means if your participant is clicking multiple times, you will have a number of um, or several elements in that list. Now, we only want to focus on the participant's very first response time. So for that reason, we use these square brackets that contain a zero. And that means that we are indexing or we're extracting that first element from that list. So this will catch people out sometimes in Python. We index using uh, zero for the first element. So that differs slightly different from other programming languages where you might use one. For now, we just need to know resp.time uh, and zero. How we know that time is an attribute of resp is something we can cover in a different tutorial. The final thing we want to do is at the moment, this here is going to be um, an integer variable, meaning that it is a number. So in order to concatenate it with this string variable, we need to also make sure that this is a string. So to do that, we can say str and in case our resp.time within that as a, um, as a variable. So we say str, we're going to convert our integer type into a string. So this is using a few kind of programming words, but really this is just uh, one small piece of code here. OK, cool. Let's save that and see what happens if we press run. OK, so we have this GUI appear here. I'm going to say that I am participant uh, 10. And we can see that we have some response time. It's very long response times. Um, so let's do one final thing. Let's try and round that down. So to do that, we can go back to our text component and what we can do is, of course, we can't round a string because a string is not a number. Instead, we need the round function, which is a mathematical function in Python, to encase our response time. Now, if our text is in red, uh, we just need to add a space uh, and remove it to the end of our string here. Um, OK, so. We've said we want to round this, but we haven't said how many decimal places we want to round that to. Now, I'm going to round it to three so that it's clear in milliseconds. And now we have some response times that are rounded to three decimal places. OK, so as an extra step here, we, of course, want to see if this also works online. Uh, so what I have actually done is I've already synced this to the web uh, through selecting this sync icon here. And if I go to my tasks here, so I go to experiments. So I've logged into my Pavlovia account. I can see that I have a task here that I've now called Posner YouTube. So I should actually say um, that I'm going to be loading up um, the versions that I've been created of these tasks. Um, to this particular project here. And I'll share the link to this project um, in the description of this video. OK, so I can click on that and I'm going to pilot the task. Let's see if I can get some response time feedback also online. Pilot. OK. And we can see that this also gives me trial by trial feedback online. OK, so thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it helpful um, and stay tuned for us to build on this task even more and see where we can take it.